all right so welcome to my totally to the youtube channel today i'm going to be reviewing a book called the 38 letters it's a letter that john d rockefeller wrote um to his son john um jr so i've read the book i i, I thoroughly and truly 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 enjoy the book uh the book is so good and i've started i started reading it um to my sons as well so i'm trusting god that you will learn a lot from the book as i begin to come up with some highlights from it like i usually do i have um, written about it in my newsletter the four letters you can you can check that out um and the link is going to be underneath so i'm going to bring out some of my highlights that i learned from you know just observing such a fantastic book uh so i'm sure that you would learn a lot of things from the book review um today as i go into it so i'm excited to to go all right so let's start with the first highlight the first thing that i learned from the book is, is on personal agency and on personal agency there's something he said in the book that was so good i'm gonna i, I will read the highlights i will read the highlights i got from the book and then i will explain certain things around it the first highlight that i got is um the founding fact the founding belief of the united states of america is that all human beings are created equal but this equality is only present in the context of rights and laws. It has, it has nothing to do with economic and cultural advantages. So in other words, it is only the government and God that we are all equal before. We are only equal as human beings. We only have equality before the government and before God. Our economic equality, inequ eco uh, there is economic inequality. And it is your job to ensure that you are not at the bottom of the economic pyramid so that you don't experience that. All right. So it is your responsibility and it is my responsibility. So it speaks a lot about personal agency. You see, talking about success won't make you successful. <laughs> success won't, uh, uh, planning about success will not make you successful. What will only make you successful is in the actions that you take, not in the actions that you wish to take. Let me read a poem to you that I think was that sums this up, you know, so beautifully. The poem goes like this. It said, preparing to do the thing isn't the thing. It says, scheduling your time to do the thing isn't the thing. It says, making a to-do list to do the thing isn't the thing. It said, telling people you are going to do the thing isn't the thing. <laughs> he says writing a banger tweet about you are, that you are going to do the thing isn't the thing he says fantasizing about doing the thing isn't the thing he says reading about how you are going to do the thing isn't the thing <laughs> he says that the only thing that is doing the thing is doing the thing it's from it's from strangersloop.io that's the only thing talking about what you are going to do is not the thing the only thing that will set you apart is if you do the thing, if you do the work. So that's what that is about. The second thing I learned from the book is unlock. I like that. He said, he said that I admit that just like a person cannot have no money, a person cannot have no luck. However, if you want to make a difference, you cannot wait for luck to patronize you. <laughs> I like that. He said, if you want to make a difference, you cannot wait for luck to patronize you. I love that. He said, and, and, I, I, and so my comment from there is that you can actually increase the surface area upon which luck will land upon based on the actions that you take. You know, when people say things like, the more I work, the luckier I become. That is really, 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 really true. You actually increase the surface area upon which luck will land upon. So the more actions you take, the higher the probability that you will get lucky at what you do. So before I continue on the Paul Full Podcast, I want to give a shout out to to um to our sponsors of the paul Fool podcast this episode of the paul Fool podcast was sponsored by veritasi veritasi is one of the fastest growing real estate development companies in africa and in nigeria 
And this episode of the Powerful Podcast was also sponsored by VP VFD Bank. It's one of the fastest growing, you know, fintech banks in Nigeria. So there's going to be a link in the show notes where you can do that. If you're watching this on YouTube, please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying this and drop a review, rate and review. If you're listening to this on any podcast platform all over the world. So let's continue. Uh, I think it was a great, it was the English writer John Milton that said that luck is a residue of design. He said that luck is a residue of design. I like that. Luck is a remnant of work. Luck is a remnant of design. So the more you work, the more you put in the work, the luckier you will become. So what do I mean by this? What you can now do is you want to send out more DMs. You want to send out more emails. You want to pick up your phone and make more sales calls because the more actions you take, the luckier you will eventually become. So I always tell people in my WhatsApp community, take more action. In fact, in my WhatsApp group, I've told all of them to pair up themselves, over 300 of them, to go live on Instagram or any platform that they choose. That anyone that makes a sale when they go live, they'll get a gift from me and the community and manager in my WhatsApp group. All right, so you want to go... Aloy, I sent you a message on, 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 um, on, on WhatsApp. Please check out that message. Check out that message. All right, so you want to increase the surface area upon, upon which luck will land upon because the more you do, the more you have a higher probability that what you call luck will come your way. Very, very important. Let's look at what it says on life. He said, you need to know that we live in a jungle. We live in a jungle whereby the weak are prey to the strong. Where you either eat people or risk being eaten by people. <laughs> oh my goodness, this guy is this guy is brutal. He said you need to understand that you live in a jungle whereby the strong will pray over the weak. So I tell people all the time, I tell my children all the time as well, do not be weak. Don't permit yourself to have any form of weakness if you can. Don't be weak physically. You do some exercise. Don't be weak psychologically and mentally. Read books that fortify you. Don't be weak spiritually. Pray. Go on your... Be gratitude journaling. You know, go on a fast. Build up yourself. Don't be weak financially. Learn how to sell. Learn how to sell. Because the more you sell, the more you earn. It is as simple as that. Now, speaking about selling... I have got a paid WhatsApp group that I think all of you should join. I'm not boasting. My WhatsApp group is the most interactive WhatsApp group for small business owners. It's crazy. If I find I'm seeing some of that notifications right now. Join the WhatsApp group. It's 8,000 naira a month or 8 pounds a month to be in my WhatsApp group. Or 15,000 naira a quarter or 60,000 naira a year. What happens in the group is that I teach Monday to Friday every day. I give them a challenge. We review a book. I hold them accountable. That's what happens in the group. We've, re we've reviewed 10 books this year already. Who would like to join the group right now? Click on the link on my Instagram bio to join the group. If you're listening to this on the podcast, the link is going to be on the show notes. Click on that link and join the, jo join the community of people who are growing and trying to make themselves better. If you're interested in that, you're watching me right now on Instagram, write and says, I, let me know that you're serious. All right. So, so, so he said that's very, very powerful. On life, let me tell you what he says. What he, what, he, what he says about his mother. He says something about his mother that was so moving and very powerful. And I felt the same sentiment because I feel the same way about my own mother as well. Here's what Rockefeller said about his mother. It was so powerful. He said that when I was a child, my mother implanted the virtues of frugality, independence, diligence, trustworthiness, and unremitting entrepreneurial spirit into my bones. <laughs> you know, I, when I put here in the notice, I said that the Bible says that a, a good man or a good parent will leave an inheritance for their children and their children's children. I permit me to believe that the kind of inheritance the Bible was talking about was not only material inheritance. It means the virtues and the values that you leave for your children that is so powerful 
that it transforms their lives forever. My mother just died. Bless her soul. Um, she was 90 years old when she died. Um, but there are some virtues that my mother placed inside of my soul. And it's so powerful. She was not a materially rich woman. But she was a godly woman. She implanted the virtues of prayer, of diligence, of honesty into my soul. And the love for the Lord into my soul. So that is an inheritance that she has left. And I was telling my wife the other day, I said, I believe that my mother gave me as a gift to the world. Anybody who reads my content, who reads my books, hears my hear me train, transform their sales. That's my mother's gift to the world. I would want to give, I also want to give my gift as my children to the earth. Did you get that? So that is what his mother said. And I thought that was really, really powerful. On greed, there's something that he said about greed. You know, when I read this book, my definition of greed changed. I used to have a negative connotation to the word greed. But when John D. Rockefeller explained greed, it wasn't a bad thing anymore. It basically means to aspire, just to want more. That's what greed is. Let me read what he said about greed. He said, no force can stop me from lifting the ban on greed because I pursue success. He says, success is achieved under, success achieved under greed is not a sin. He says, success is a noble pursuit. If you can achieve success with a noble behavior, you can contribute far more to mankind than what can be done in poverty. He says, I, he said, I did it. <laughs> I like this guy. So I, see, so, I, so I wrote here, I said, I used to associate greed to something negative. But after reading this book, my association with greed change. You can actually replace the word greed for aspiration. And if you look at it, all of us are greedy. We all want more. We all want more. Nobody wants to settle for less. You don't want two followers. You want a thousand followers. You don't want a thousand followers on Instagram. You want a million followers. We all want more. And there is nothing inherently wrong in that. It's human nature. It's just the way that we are wired. All right. I hope you're enjoying this. If you're enjoying this, write a review on 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 on, on YouTube or Spotify, whatever you're listening to this, and you can share that with me in my Instagram stories. I'll respond to that. Uh, so that's where I leave it for now. I mean, this book was was fascinating. Those of you who listen to this on YouTube, uh, please click on the subscribe button, write a comment, and tell me what you think about it. And then uh, and join my paid WhatsApp group where we're going to be reviewing this book in depth. We'll review this book in depth in my WhatsApp group. If you join us, click on the link. It's just eight dollars or eight thousand naira to be in the community. So thank you, uh, those of you who who just uh, did that. All right. Uh, good. <laughs>